I have the Radiolink A560 3D trainer playing out here. I have the new Radiolink R8XM telemetry receiver installed in it. And I am bound up with the Radiomaster TX16S. So I just wanted to test this out with my multi-protocol transmitter. I'm using protocol uh, Radiolink, sub-protocol Air. I do have the battery telemetry set up on the TX16S. So if the battery voltage falls below 7.2 volts, so 2S LiPo, or 3.6 volts per cell, I should get three beeps in a row, and then it will pause five seconds, and if it stays below 7.2 seconds, I should continue to get that alarm. All right, so I've got it in full stabilization mode for launch. We've got relatively blue skies out here today, so that's, that's different. All right, launching. Okay, now I'm just in wind mitigation mode. Oh, I'm getting a battery alarm already. It's cold out here. It's about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So there, just for a second, it dropped below 7.2 volts, probably when I launched it. And there we go again. <laughs> These little 2S LiPos do not like this cold. I had the same issue when I was flying it with the Radiolink T8FB, a channel transmitter, that it just, you know, it pulls the voltage down quickly in this cold so let's just cruise around and see if I get another battery alarm in five seconds it's been about five seconds so as long as I'm cruising around like this it's not pulling the cells down below uh, 3.6 volts but when I put some throttle in it it will and the cold it just you know it pulls it down quickly and then you have to give it time to recover You heard, I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but I got it again when I did that loop. I guess in this cold weather, I'm going to have to set my, yeah, there we go. I guess in this cold weather, I am going to have to set my alarm to a lower voltage. There it goes again. Oh, there we go. So the battery telemetry is working fine. There we go. <laughs> there we go again. Maybe you guys can hear it. It's a little louder. The alarm is a little bit louder on the TX16S than it is on the T8FB. So I don't know if you could hear it in that video. An awesome little 3D trainer playing. So I think I'm going to, you know, since it comes with a 2S, there it goes again. So when it, since it comes with a 2S um, telemetry cable with this receiver, I am probably going to leave it in this 3D plane for now. And then I will probably order some more of them. And then, and then, there we go. <laughs> and then fabricate. And then fabricate some telemetry cables for some 3S and 4S LiPos because when I need some additional receivers, I think I'm going to be ordering some of these R8XM receivers. Isn't that fantastic though? Look at that. That is cool. I still have my flight timer set, so I have my flight timer set for eight minutes. So we'll go ahead and we'll fly it for eight minutes, and then we will test the battery voltage once we land. It has certainly uh, given me a lot of alarms on the voltage. Uh, 
I don't know if you can if you can hear the wind in the transmitter. I mean, in, in the camera. Uh, we've got about uh, four to five mile an hour wind on the ground right now. Isn't that little plane cool, though? Uh, look at that pull vertical. That is just absolutely awesome. So, so far, uh, no problems whatsoever. with my radio control with this receiver. Um, as I stated in the last video with this, testing this receiver, I think a 3D plane is a good thing to test this receiver in because I give it every single profile you can think of to see if it will, you know, affect the RSSI. Of course, I'm just flying close proximity, and this has a reported range of 4,000 meters. I have found all the radio link equipment so far that I have used to be really, really good quality stuff. So I actually ordered four more of the Radio Link R8FM S bus PPM receivers because I ran out of them and I still have some radio link by May gyros that I want to put in some planes so I had to purchase some more SBUS receivers and I purchased four of those so I really like the radio link components <laughs> that plane is so cool. It looks like my battery voltage is probably, you know, staying steady right below where I've got the alarm. Those three beeps, if you can hear them, that is the battery voltage alarm. Wow, it is really cold out here. I'm going to have to warm my hands up after this flight. Isn't that fantastic, though? So graceful in the air. <laughs> it is it is even though it's a 3d plane this is plane is so darn easy to fly i don't want to run into the scrum i've done that before all right so now i've got my flight timer all right all right, let's see. We don't have anybody coming. Let's see if we can bring it in in this crosswind and set it down. And the wind has just picked up. I bet you can hear it now. <laughs> make me, make me a little colder, will you? There we go. All right, so let's pull this pack and see what kind of voltage we've got in it after it recovers. And, well, as long as we're still in winter, I guess I'm gonna have to lower that voltage down to about, I don't know, seven volts, I guess, before I get a battery alarm, because this cold just, you know, really pulls them down quickly. So let me see if I can hold this up here where you can see it. 
7.5, so 3.755, 3.758. So it was able to recover some of that voltage after I landed, uh, since I wasn't pulling any voltage out of it after that. But um, yeah, I've got it set for 7.2 volts right now. That might work in the summer months when it's a lot warmer out here, but in the winter time. I guess I'm going to have to set it down to 7 volts or maybe even um, maybe even 6.8 because once I land um, those those cells will recover up to 3.6 volts or a little bit more. So anyway, that um, Radio Link RAXM, I've flown it with the Radio Link T8FB 8 channel transmitter and now I have flown it with the Radio Master TX16S have no communication problems whatsoever it handled flawlessly the battery telemetry works on both of those transmitters so stay tuned i'll be putting some more flights on it thanks for watching and i will see you in the air